Eight months ago, at the time of recording this video, I started a brand new Minecraft world using one of the most sophisticated building mods available, Conquest Reforged. I set myself a bunch of rules and challenges for this world, and only by completing these tasks would I be able to progress in the game. For example, Conquest Reforged adds an overwhelming 15,000 new blocks and models, and so because of that, my first challenge was to limit the blocks I used to basically just dirt and other primitive blocks. Only once I had built an entire village out of dirt, would I be able to progress? And so began the Dirt Age. Now here we are eight months later and we're almost done. Welcome everybody to the last episode of The Hammer Season 1. Once this episode is done, the Dirt Age will be over and we'll be leaving this area for the foreseeable future. But before we go, there's still a lot that needs to be done and I've already made a start by building this boat here. It's something that I've wanted to do for quite a while now. We built this boathouse and I have sort of a boat that's being worked on in there. But I didn't have one on the water, but there's a bit of a problem. I'm gonna need a bow for this because creepers scare me a lot. Oh no, I broke the boat. Whoops. There's one down. I'm pretty sure there is another one in the boat somewhere, so I gotta be really careful. Is it clear? It looks clear, but you know, creepers, they can jump out at you at any second. Put a couple torches down. Nice, it's a brand new day. Sun's come up. Let's take a closer look. So according to the law that we have for this land here, this people, this village, they came from afar and they sailed in and sort of settled right here. And so it makes complete sense that there is a boat here that they sailed in on, right? So I didn't actually design this boat myself. I had some help from my friend Urizen to fight. I'll have their profile linked below. They're an incredible shipbuilder. One like that. Maybe another one on this side. Nice, there we go. We've got some invisible light. That's going to disappear any second now, and that should keep the mobs out. There is, however, one thing, one very important thing that is missing from this boat. And if you know anything about ships or you are Urizen to fight, you've probably been looking at this the whole time and going, why is it missing that? That's super important. And that is that there are supposed to be ropes that kind of attach to the mast. This is the mast, right? <laughs> I really hope that's the mast. In vanilla Minecraft, you would probably just use fences or something like that. But because we have the Conquest Reforge mod, we're going to get a little bit fancier. So to do this, we need to make a pile of rope. That's going to give us access to all these recipes here. But it requires a lot of string. And I think at the moment, I have <laughs> I said measly four pieces to my name. So that is... That is a shocking start. So how do we get string? I don't know. It's a good question. No, I do know actually. I do know. Um, so I don't have like a dungeon or anything. There's no spider spawners nearby. Um, actually, before I get the horse. But there are some mine shafts, some dungeons, and they always have tons of spider webs. So I'm thinking that we go on a little bit of an adventure. In fact, let me show you something really quick. Here's us here. Here's us in the village. Uh, here's me. Here's the boat. All the way across here, across these misty mountains, across these snowy meadows, across this darkness, um, somewhere over here. There should be a mineshaft here, if I remember correctly. It's quite an adventure. That's why I got the horse. There's probably like a hundred mineshafts around there, but I don't know where they are. The one over there has like an entrance on the surface that I know about. So that's the one we're going to go for. So um, <laughs> hopefully this goes well. There's a village down there. There's a village. I think I should be able to spend the night there. Nice. Oh, sorry horse. Sorry again. That's not a village. I got scammed. That's a pillager outpost. Speaking of which, I don't think I've ever checked out one of these. Yo, let's do it. Let's do it right now. I got the diamond armor. Let's check out the pillager outpost. All right, what can go wrong? I got my helmet on, got my shield. Surely nothing. Surely nothing. Look, they're already out. They're waiting for me. Oh, come on. There we go. One down. So these pillager outposts are like visually way more intense. I wonder if they are going to have many more challenges. I'm very curious. I'll be, I'll be generous. I'll be kind. You can come out. Yes, help me. Yeah. Nice. Frosty. 
Frosty, that's the that's the name for the golem. Frosty the Snowman. Let me scope around the edges just in case. Looks pretty good so far. No surprises. All right, I think it's time to finally go in. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm excited. I'm just gonna charge straight in. Get him! Oh, there's an actual spawner. What kind of spawner is this? Interesting. Can I farm this? Maybe. Let's. Oh, where are you coming from? Nice. Oh, they've got iron doors in this castle. This is so cool. Okay. Uh oh. There's heaps. Why are there so many? I can. Oh my goodness. Holy, I didn't. Okay. Dude, what? Okay, hold on. This is sketchy, bro. Sketchy. How do I block it? <sighs> okay, so I've decided that I'm not gonna break any of these spawners. I'm actually gonna try and do something with them. But it doesn't make it any easier. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so mini. No, 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 no. Okay, this is actually so bad. Oh my goodness. Oh snap, this is this is crazy guys. Holy Okay, this, I gotta break one. This is this is this is too much. And eat and eat and eat. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> I can't get out. Let me out. Oh no. <laughs> oh snap, what do I do? What do I do? Okay, so there's a chest in there. Okay, the bottleneck's at the stairway though. Maybe I can catch them there. You guys are so ugly. Leave me alone. Now if I just block off this staircase. Uh, wow, okay. Not great. I've got so many arrows in me. Um, so there's a lot of spawners in here. There's, there's so many. I might try and farm them at some point in the game, but for now, I just gotta get out of here. This place is crazy. Oh gosh. Bucket clutch. Okay. Quick horse, we gotta go. It's time to go. Me and you, we gotta we gotta get out of here. Get the bed. Oh no! After that stopover, I decided to get focused and find this mysterious mineshaft. Unfortunately for me though, I'm terrible with maps and just directions in general, so I ended up going the wrong way for at least a thousand blocks. But after a very scenic detour, I managed to make it to where the mineshaft was. Nah, this is this is totally the wrong place. <laughs> or at least where I thought it was. It was actually many months ago that I'd come this way, so my memory was pretty foggy. I searched for like two to three hours before giving up and calling it a day. I've made zero progress. So I'm back at it today, um, and I had the genius idea- Wow, that is violence. <laughs> I had the genius idea of opening up some old recordings to see if I, uh, I recorded where the thing was, and I didn't. I, the same thing, I got lost. It took me so long that I stopped recording and started recording once I had found it. But there was one clip where I opened the map ever so briefly, and I think it's right here. Come on, please. <laughs> please be here. It's supposed to be here. Where is it? This is so strange. I distinctly remember it being right here. Like, everything lines up with what I remember, but the entrance to the mineshaft isn't here. So I think what happened is that I deleted some chunks, and for some reason, they haven't generated with the mineshaft entrance to the surface. So I'm just going to try and dig down and hope that it's still there. What's that thing that you're not supposed to do in Minecraft? Can't remember. It's not a mine shaft, but it is a cave. Big one at that. Let's check it out. <gasps> it's still here. <laughs> the mine shaft is down here. Oh, it it looks exactly how I remember it, which is funny because I can remember how it looks like, but I can't remember how to get to it. Now I just got to get like a million string. trip back I crossed not one not two but three different mountain ranges so we went through here so there's one it's kind of like a second one here and then I went across this one here uh, all the way to this uh, mine shaft that we ended up here and it reminded me how important paths are and how much I actually really love building them and so at some point I want to have all of the different civilizations connected via road I think that would be so cool now regarding the matter of string I got 55 and that will make me 
six piles of rope. I don't actually think that's going to be enough. I'm going to need like triple four times quad five times that amount to get this done. And so that's that's awkward. <laughs> The whole mission kind of failed. But before I completely gave up, I did a little search in the item menu and turns out that I can turn diamond horse armor. There's a 25% chance I can get string from it. So I'm gonna go and break some, no, I'm just kidding. So there's actually, you can, uh, the same way that I made the slime balls earlier in the series, I can't even remember how that worked, but I can bust up wool and get string out of it. So uh, we're gonna try doing that. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm missing something. It needs to be vertical though. So I do this then. And then where's my crank? Uh-huh. Where's my wool? Can I just drop that in? And then what happens now? If I just crank it. Go. Cool. And that's done. I have 13 string. I have 22 string now. Okay. Where's my wool? I need a grind. That's going to take me so long. Maybe I can power this up a little bit. Maybe I can get some bigger cog wheels. So I can spin that. Big one spins, little one. This goes like that. This goes on here. Okay, and then I put this here. Okay, it spins really fast. That's rough. That is so rough. But maybe then I can make some steps up. And I'm just going to put the whole amount in. Is this going to go any faster? I think that was faster. I'm pretty sure that was faster than before. 49 string. I don't know. This is cool though. I can't wait to do more with the create mod. Sometimes I make myself laugh. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh cool, yeah, easy. Let's build a little boat, get some string. Sure, no problem. Two days later, it's like taking me two days just to <laughs> put these like ropes up. But the boat is finally done and we can move on with what we really wanted to do today in this video. Nice, now that we're done with the boat drum, it's time to finally move on with the main objective of this video, which is to finish the village so we can get out of here. <laughs> so we can move on. I brought some signs with me to create like a little sign barrier. That way I gotta finish all the things on the list before I'm allowed to leave. Starting with number one, the feasting hall. You have probably seen in the background this outline of stone bricks as I've been walking around. I laid out the shape. This is where it's going to go. This is how big it is. It's pretty decent size. So we're going to get onto that one real soon. Next one that I have to do is connect all the paths. This is the main road out of town and it's it's not even connected to the town. So yeah, that's something I want to do. Get this road in here, get it connected. Also this one here that goes over to the village. And I think that should do it for that one. And lastly, after the previous video, I asked what other things that I should do before we leave the village and a tannery was one of the main suggestions. So try adding one of those here as well before we leave. So now onto the feasting hall. Uh, I've had a few comments lately asking if I can explain through my building process. It's kind of got me thinking like, oh, do I have a building process? Like what, what do I even do? Uh, I design usually in creative. So um, like I'll, I'll spend a bunch of time looking at pictures, um, finding what I like, what I don't like, and then I'll try and translate that into Minecraft. Um, but it doesn't always go to plan, so you got to improvise as well. And by improvising, I guess I mean not everything translates perfectly from real life into Minecraft. Um, we don't have like the blocks to make certain shapes and slopes and angles. So you just got to kind of make it up as you go. So this build, for example, I took inspiration from like three or four different images. I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to look mean and be symmetrical. Those were some of the things that I wanted. Um, and I sort of came up with something in a different, different parts, reference different pictures. Um, and it looks terrible. It looks so bad. The roof for it was just way too tall. I mean, it looked right according to the picture, but in Minecraft it was just, it was a bit ridiculous. So I binned it and started again. So I'm going to go ahead and get building on this. We'll see how much I get done. I'll probably just do the first layer and you'll get to see sort of how it's coming together. This is going to be like the main, main floor, main level. There's like a staircase that comes up over there. And then I'm going to have a big wooden floor and like a throne for the chief over there. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. We've got the first layer of the building. Uh, as you can see, it's considerably bigger than all the other structures in the village. So just naturally off the rip, it looks more important than everything else, which is what we want here. And I just want to add a few little bits of grass in here. Maybe something like, uh, like this. Nice. Through these doors is going to take you into the main dining hall. Up there is going to be like sort of the chief, chief's family. They're going to sit here, look over all their subjects. Uh, and then through this back door here is going to be the kitchen area. So we're going to have some hanging meats and hanging veggies. And then that will go out the back to, I don't know, 
something else out there. I feel like we're at the point with this series where we've got like a fantasy tree stump. These um like lore rocks. <laughs> It's kind of like realism's gone out the window. So this build is sort of definitely leans a little bit more fantasy, which I'm totally fine with. Right, so I'm just going to come through now and sort of plot out where the rest of the build is going to go. Probably going to have some poles going up, some arches with hanging lights, like stools, benches, food everywhere. This is coming together well. And it's going to tie the village together real nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. After procrastinating for months, it's finally finished. Finally managed to get this feasting hall in and I wanted to rip back and check it out from this angle because I think it looks so cool uh, just sneaking past the roads here. It sort of just appears in the background there and that's one thing that I'm so happy now that the village has sort of expanded a little bit more. There's these little roads that shoot off and you sort of get different views as you walk past things. But yeah, here it is. Rocking up the stairs we have the main door here and surrounding it there's this kind of detailed ornamental carved wood look. This is the only place in the village that it appears. Outside the village we use a little bit on the nether portal there but I thought if this is you know the chief's big feasting hall, big chief, then we probably want to put in a little bit more effort. But I really like this entrance. Cruising on inside we have some pillars, some archways, all the tables and chairs in and then this is where the big royal family is going to sit and look over their subjects. I don't know if that's how the Vikings work. I was thinking also that maybe we could do the interior together. I wanted to use this kind of like paneling here to do a little bit more detailing behind this this head table here. Next up, we got to get rid of these torches here. They don't belong there. Um, and I've been really enjoying this design, the sort of light design with these poles and then putting the torches on top. I think that looks really cool and it kind of fits the mood as well. Maybe do that and then drop that on there and then I need my flint and steel to light it. I think maybe we just do the big one down this end for the chief and then all these other ones down the rest of the way we just have the regular ones. Nice, I like that, that looks good. I wanted to come in now with these shields. Um, they're actually wagon wheels but they're the closest things that I have in this mod pack to shields. Okay, uh, I don't know if this is the vibe but let's try it. Um, we're gonna do black, we're gonna do a black curtain covering the doorway um, something like this, I think. And then, yeah, okay, we need to convert these into black curtain vines. They don't really look like vines, but sure. Um, and we'll do something like that on each of these, these pillars here. And we have a black banner. Last one there. That's it, it's coming together. It's getting better each thing we add, each layer. Okay, starting from the top, how about we do this? We put a couple of chairs in, put some candles in the middle maybe, give them a golden chalice and a couple of, uh, what are these, tankards. Probably need some candles as well to light it up a little bit more. I'm not sure what the light levels are in here currently, but we'll put a couple of these around. You can have bread or bread. That's my bread. Uh, we'll use this one instead. Um, something like that. Big bread. That's a big loaf of bread. They must be really hungry on that table. Something like that is probably a good start. Down the back we have a lovely little kitchen. Pretty simple. Just a bunch of hanging meats, veggies, herbs, some storage and then a big fire pit in the middle where everything would be cooked. They need something over top of it though, and I wanted to have a pig, um, but the crafting recipe for that, yep, there's a crafting recipe <laughs> for a pig. It requires pork, and I don't actually have any pigs. I was like, oh, where do I find them? So I'm gonna go on a little bit of a hunt, see if I can't find some pigs to waste. There's one, and two. Take some of those. <laughs> That's my first time picking up chicken. So I got a little bit scammed. It's not pork chop, that makes the pig. I tried it raw as well. It's not beef. <laughs> it's mutton from the sheep that makes pig on a spit. Yup, that makes sense. One, two, and done. Mm, not bad. Very nice. Tick that one off the list. That's one thing done on our sign barrier. We're now one step closer to being able to finish all the jobs and leave the village. Thing turned out pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. There's still a few things that I like to do. The outside, I kind of wanted to have like a big open air wrestling arena. We talked about that early in the season and maybe like a tree of worship or something like that. But who knows, maybe we'll come back and do that stuff later on. But I took a bit of time just now to sort of start working on the video. 
working on editing it and it's turning it so long it's turning out to be quite the intrepid video so i've got started on the next task this is my horse horse the next task of doing all the paths i sort of went ahead and got working on it so i've done the ones outside the village let's see if i can remember not shift to open there we go don't want to keep breaking it um yeah we now have a path that goes all the way outside the village alongside the river through the fields um all the way to the village and it's you know could do with a little bit more detail but at least it's in are there even villages here still uh oh <laughs> oh no here they are they're just chilling by the by the pigs I'll leave them in there. I was going to let them out, but no. Not only do we have a path leading into the village, but I also added one leading out. And this one's a little bit more interesting because it has this slow gradient up the hill and the horse is struggling with it a little bit. Um, but I went in and I added all these uh, like dirt slabs. Took ages, uh, but I'm really happy. It's so nice having this like highly, highly detailed path. And the idea is that the lighter stuff in the middle makes sense. Like uh, all the dirt sort of worn off and it's a little bit rockier. And then sort of towards the edge of the path, it's more dirty and then eventually it gets mossy and turns back into grass. So that's the idea with that. Right on the edge of the village though, I'm thinking of making it almost all grass or all mossy because it doesn't get traveled. One of the ideas that we have for the law for this village is that these rocks resemble some kind of hesitation for the villagers. Going beyond this point in the village is considered quite risky. The chances of return, lower. So. I'm going to try and make it look a little bit more overgrown, kind of like people don't come through here very much. Yeah, something like that should work. So it just goes from rocky to mossy to grassy, then out the village. So let's get rid of that one and that one. One last one and then we're out of here. Oh, there's a cow in the background. But before we get that going, I want to show you guys one last thing, and that is this grass. Um, you guys know that I love the grass. We almost dedicated an entire episode to it. Um, growing up, I was never like into gardening. My mum was a gardener, so she'd have me out in the garden, pulling weeds and stuff like that, watering the plants. I didn't really care though. But since playing Conquest, I've actually started like, I've gone and researched different types of grass, like, you know, ooh, perennial rye grass. But I did this whole area here, and um, you'll probably be able to see these kind of like reed plants here, these like cattail things. And I only did it in this little section here. And I think I need to take it to the rest of the village. So let me do that real quick. It's time for the final piece of the puzzle, the tannery. If you've never heard that word before, a tannery was a place where they would process animal hides to make things like furs and leathers, and then those would go on to make things like clothes, shoes, bags, that kind of thing. So it's safe to assume that they were a pretty important part of a villager. Now our one is going to be kind of an outdoor one because to process the animal hides, they use these kind of chemical bars. I'm going to just illustrate sort of an idea of how they would work with wool. They would be probably be made of something like clay bricks or something like that, but for for this example we're just going to outline it with wool. They would get processed in these chemical baths and then they would be put on these racks to dry. These are the tanning racks that come with the mod pack. They look pretty sweet, so we're going to kind of go ahead, put like a, a little building here, uh, surround it with a bunch of uh, these racks here, and then we've got to put some cows in there because uh, you got to get the animal hides from somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is. Roof is on. It's uh, slightly angled. I tried 45 degrees. I did a little bit of testing in creative. Didn't quite work out at 45, so I tried 12 degrees and I kind of liked it. We got these light poles in again and a bit of foliage and a path that splits off. I said path with an F. That's, that's bad, bad speaking. Anyway, it rocks in here. We got the woolen uh, placeholder baths. I was thinking maybe we try light limestone. Uh, I think it's probably close enough. Pretty interesting. I just found that there's a cobblestone sort of version of the limestone. So I'm thinking maybe we add in a little bit of that. Something, I don't know, something like that. It just sort of adds like a little bit of variation, breaks it up. These subtle details, very unnecessary, but I can sleep, sleep easy knowing that they're in there. So obviously they're just water. Uh, I think that's fine. I don't know if I can change the color at all. But it works. I wanted to have this kind of open and airy design. I don't know, but I imagine that these chemicals are probably not super great to breathe in. So I thought maybe having something with a little bit of airflow, 
Probably works good. Uh, and then I just want to come out here and put these drying racks down. Maybe doing something like this. Maybe I put another one over here. I like that. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. The next thing to do now is to create a little pen for the cows. We're just going to make a shape with this cobblestone. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of like do a little lap and then close it up and call it done, I guess. Uh, I think I'm going to move it down, actually. I want it closer to the road. The requirements for building an effective cow pen are super simple. There's only one rule, and that is that the cows cannot get out. And I think that we've passed with flying colors. I mean, this part here, maybe that one's like a pushing it a little bit. So we'll just take these blocks out here. But I think the rest of the way around, maybe this one as well. I think the rest of the way around though is solid, like at least 1.5 blocks. Um, yep, that's good. That's good. Good, good, good. Cool. Cows can live in here and keep living in here. They're, they're not getting out, ever. <laughs> no! What? How did you get out? How did you get out? That is only two... Okay. What do you... Oh, no. And now with all that done, we can finally head over here, break the sign, load up the horse, and ride off into the sunset. For this final scene here in the village, I thought I'd pop the shaders on just one time. I've had a lot of people request it. It's not something that I do. I don't film with the shaders normally because, to be honest, despite <laughs> what you guys might think, my computer isn't that great. It's uh, I'm, I'm probably getting like 20 frames right now. Uh, and I also just really like the way that the vanilla lighting looks. Um, so, you know, it's nice for the cinematics and the cutscenes, but I just prefer, prefer it just vanilla. I hope you don't mind if it's a little bit choppy, but this is how we're going to say our final farewell to this village that we've spent so long in. The trading hall, the boat sheds, the boat, the first house we built on this road, and so many more. I'm going to miss this place. I'm going to miss it a lot. Well, here we are at the gates, ready to go. We got the horse and the donkey all loaded up, and it's time to say goodbye. Thank you all so much for your support on this series. It's insane. I honestly, I can't comprehend it. I do not have words. This last week has just been incredible. I've learned so much about Minecraft, about building, about like the ancient Norse history and culture. It's incredible. I'm sure you've all learned a little bit as well. So to all the people that have commented with build ideas, with writing ideas, story ideas, Thank you so much. Uh, I can't wait to see what unfolds in the next age of this series. From me, peace out.